Hi everyone, today I want to talk to you about chapter 14, writing definitions, descriptions, and instructions. Uh, so, starting with what are definitions, descriptions, and instructions? A definition is typically a brief explanation using words and sometimes graphics of what an item is or what a concept means. A description is typically a longer explanation, usually accompanied by graphics, of the physical or operational features of an object, mechanism, or process. A set of instructions is a kind of process description, almost always accompanied by graphics, intended to enable a person to carry out a task. So let's start with definitions. You have to begin with where you're going to place the definition. Is it going to be in the text, in the marginal gloss, in a separate hyperlinked file, in a footnote, in a glossary, or in, a in an appendix? Definitions have two main uses. Definitions clarify a description of a new development or a new technology in a technical field, and they also help specialists communicate with less knowledgeable readers. There are three different types of definitions, parenthetical, sentence, and extended. Sentence definitions follow a typical pattern. The item to be defined is placed in a category of similar items, then distinguished from them. These are five guidelines for writing effective sentence definitions. Be specific in stating the category and the distinguishing characteristics. Don't describe an item if you are defining a general class of items. So don't be specific if you're talking about the big picture. Avoid writing circular definitions. This is a hard one and it's done more often than you, than you realize probably. A circular definition just merely repeats the term and its or its distinguishing characteristics. So you're not really explaining what something is. Be sure the category contains a noun or a noun phrase rather than a phrase beginning with when, what, or where. And also consider using a graphic. Again, going back to our graphic unit, a picture is worth a thousand words. A lot of times you can show an image of something and that will help clarify your definition or further um, explain your definition. Extended definitions, which are longer definitions, you want to think about including graphics, examples, partition, principle of operation, comparison and contrast, an analogy, a negation, or an etymology. Any of these can be used in extended definitions. Descriptions are verbal and visual representations of the features of an object, a mechanism, or a process. Use the following suggestions to write effective descriptions. Indicate clearly the nature and scope of the description. Introduce the description clearly. Provide the appropriate level of detail and end the description with a brief conclusion. So make it a thorough, complete unit of information. When you um, are introducing an object or mechanism type of description, answer these five questions. What is the item? What is the function of the item? What does the item look like? How does the item work? What are the principal parts of the item? So in other words, you want to give your reader as much information as they need to understand the mechanism. Uh, process descriptions. What is the process? What is the function of the process? The purpose? Um, when does the process take place? Who or what performs the process? How does the process work? What are the principal steps in the process? That's a key element is the steps in the process. Provide appropriate detail and mechanism and object descriptions. Choose an appropriate level of organization or choose an appropriate organizational principle. Is it functional or spatial? And use graphics. Provide the appropriate detail in process descriptions. Structure the step-by-step -step description chronologically. First this, then this. Explain causal relationships among the steps. Use the present tense and use graphics. And descriptions with a brief conclusion. Conclude descriptions of mechanisms to some, of some objects. State briefly how the parts function together. 
um, to conclude a process description, provide a short paragraph summarizing the principal steps or discussing the importance or implications of the process. Consider five questions when designing a set of instructions. What are your reader's expectations? Do you need to create more than one set of instructions for different audiences? What languages should you use? Will readers be anxious about the information? Will the environment in which the instructions are read affect the document design? Follow these guidelines to design clear, attractive pages. Create an open, airy design. Use white space generally or generously. Clearly regulate the graphics or relate the graphics to the text. So you want your words and images clearly connected and closely related or in close proximity of one another. Um, examples of a cluttered page design and an attractive page design. On the left, you can see that this is cluttered. And on the right, you can see that it's very, there's a generous use of white space. Um, you've got your steps numbered very clearly and you can move along and you've got your images located right next to your words. Understand signal words used in manuals and instructions. These are important ones. Danger indicates immediate and serious hazard. Warning indicates the potential for serious injury. Caution indicates the potential for anything from moderate injury to serious equipment damage or destruction. And note indicates a tip or suggestion to help readers carry out a procedure successfully. So use those terms appropriately in your manuals and instructions. This is an example of a safety label. You've seen these kinds of things. The red indicates uh, warning. We've got the yellow um, upside down yield sign with the explanation point, danger, um, high voltage. So make sure you use the appropriate warning symbols as well when you're creating manuals or instructions. Instructions usually have four elements, a title, a general introduction, step-by-step -step instructions, and a conclusion. When you want to write effective titles for instructions, write simple, clear titles that begin with a how-to or a gerund. How to install the J112 shock absorber or installing the J112 shock absorber. Avoid long noun streams. J112 shock absorber installation instructions. Answer these questions when drafting introductions for instructions. Who should carry out this task? Why should the reader carry out this task? When will the reader carry out this task? What safety measures or other concerns should the reader understand? What items will the reader need? How long will the task take? Follow these guidelines when drafting steps or for instructions. Number the instructions. Present the right amount of information in each step. Use the imperative mood, which is do this. It's the way that these um, are, are, uh, bullets are presented to you. Do not confuse steps and feedback statements. Include graphics. Do not admit articles like a, an, and the to save spaces. These little words can be very important and provide a great deal of explanation or clarification. Typical elements in front matter of an manual, overview of contents, convention section, where to get help section, list of trademarks. Those are general elements. Um, in the back matter, you want set of specifications, list of government safety regulations and industry standards, tips on maintenance and service, copyright, index, and glossary. That's it. If you have questions, please post them in the I Have a Question forum, and um, I will look forward to talking to you again soon.